to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In Matthew chapter 26, verse number 28, as Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper among His followers, He said when He took the fruit of the vine, This is My blood of the new covenant that was shed for many for the forgiveness of sin. Every person who reads the words of Jesus and looks into the life of Jesus realizes the significance of the blood of Christ in the New Testament. But today we ask a very important question. How does a person contact the saving blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We hope you'll get your Bible and that you'll stay tuned as we consider this, para- this question of paramount importance together. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 Four five eight three nine zero five. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. When we think of the blood of Jesus, what is it that we think of? Well, often blood carries with it the idea of that which comes out of our veins, naturally our arteries. We think of that red fluid substance that each of us needs to survive. And naturally, when the Bible speaks about blood, at times it no doubt is talking about that red substance, but there's more to it than just that in the Scripture. Blood represents the life of an individual. Since our body is made up of blood and we can't survive without it, blood often became associated with life in the Bible. And so as we think about the blood of Jesus today, we're really going to be asking three basic questions. What does the Bible mean when it says blood in Scripture? What is the significance of the blood of Christ? What makes it so important? And then how does a person come in contact with the soul-saving blood of Jesus Christ. Let's consider that first question. What does the Bible mean when it uses the word blood in relation to the sacrifice of Jesus? Well, as we said, in the Scripture, blood came to represent life, It came to represent sacrifice and that which made a covering or atonement for sin. I want you to notice this passage, Leviticus chapter 17. I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 11. The Old Testament recorded, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Here we learn that that blood 
represented life. And the losing of one's blood in the sacrifice represented atonement or a, a covering for sin. And so instead of thinking maybe about the last time that you cut yourself or maybe had a nosebleed or that red fluid substance, when we talk about blood as it's related to covering man's sins, we're talking about the life, the sacrifice and the atonement of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so if life equals blood or blood equals life, then the absence of one's blood, the losing of one's blood represents sacrifice or their death. Listen to Jesus' words again in Matthew 26, verse number 28. Jesus said, This is my blood of the new covenant that was shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. When Jesus began his suffering on Calvary or in the praetorium, when he was beaten, when he was mocked, when he was spit upon, when they placed that crown of thorns on his head, when stripes were laid on his back, and his blood literally flowed from his body. That blood or the absence of it represented the ultimate sacrifice and covering for sin that was paid by the Lord for each and every one of us. Now, as we think about the meaning of blood, let's also realize that, that blood is necessary for salvation. It was necessary in the Old Testament and it's necessary for Christians today. And remember, we're talking about blood. We're talking about sacrifice and atonement. Listen to Hebrews chapter 9 or notice Hebrews 9, verse number 22. The Bible says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. How essential is blood in sacrifice and atonement? Without the shedding of blood. The Bible says there is no forgiveness of sins. If we don't contact the blood of Jesus, then friend, I can't be forgiven of sin, nor can anyone else. Now, under the Old Testament, we know that animal sacrifices were made. But what about those animal sacrifices? Did they completely remedy the sin problem? Not according to the Scripture. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, that the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. What makes Christ's sacrifice different then? Jesus' sacrifice transcends and is greater than all those because He willingly and freely gave Himself as a perfect offering. His pure blood was spilled on the ground or was shed on the ground at Calvary for the salvation of mankind. He committed no sin. 1 Peter 2, verse 22, he, he, he was tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4, 15, He is that Lamb of God. John 1, 29, who had lived a perfect, sinless, spotless life. And as a result, it is His sacrifice that for all time takes care of sin. Do you remember Hebrews 10, verse 12? In contrasting the blood of bulls and goats, then the Hebrew writer exalts the sacrifice of Jesus. This man, Jesus, after it offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, one for all time. That's the importance of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now let's direct our attention to a second part in our study on the blood of Jesus. And it's not just that we want to realize that blood is more than just the red fluid substance. It is the totality of the sacrifice of Jesus. But what is the significance why is the blood of Jesus so essential to salvation? And friend, as we study our Bible and as we look to the Scripture, we find that blood is related to these items that are indeed essential and significant. First, the blood of Christ is that which brings forgiveness of sin. Now, each of us realize the importance of forgiveness. It's sin that separates a man from God. Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. It is a personal problem that everybody of the age of accountability has to deal with. Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we realize the importance of forgiveness, but we don't sometimes notice that blood is also significant in our forgiveness. Listen to Matthew 26, 28 again. Jesus took that fruit of the vine. This is my blood of the new covenant that was shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Why did Jesus have to die? Why did his blood, why was it shed on Calvary? Why did he offer himself as a sacrifice? For the atonement, blood and sacrifice and forgiveness are all uniquely related in the plan of God. Remember, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so blood is necessary for forgiveness. It's Christ's blood that forgives sins. Therefore, we realize the importance and the essentiality of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What else makes the blood of Christ essential and significant? Friend, the Bible teaches that redemption is possible by the blood of Christ. Now, the word redemption in the original language means to buy back. It carries with it the idea of that which was sold, maybe sold into slavery, and is now being bought back to the original owner or master. We realize that each of us at one time have been slaves of sin. Romans 6, 17, God be thanked, though you were the slaves of sin, at one time we had sold ourselves into slavery to sin, and it is the blood of Christ that redeems us or buys us back to God. Listen to the words of Ephesians 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. What, what price was paid to buy us back from the slavery of sin? The ultimate price. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus laid down the ultimate price and He gave His life as a sacrifice so that men and women could be reunited and bought back to God and be in a relationship with Him as their children. And so we've got forgiveness that is made by the blood of Jesus. We've got redemption that occurs by the wonderful blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But friend, the Bible also teaches that justification comes by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, the word justified is a very unique word. Uh, sometimes this word is used uh, maybe to carry the idea of forgiveness as well, but it's more than just that. It carries the idea of once again being pure. Sometimes we define it as saying justified means it's just as if I'd never sinned. And that really is a, a pretty good and easy way to understand it. But I want you to listen to what the Scripture says in Romans chapter 5, verse number 9, about the justification that's possible by the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, Much more then, having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Where does that justification that once again being clean and pure and holy in God's sight come from, men and women must contact the blood of Jesus, having now been justified by His blood. It is the agent, that sacrifice, that atonement, that cover for sin that Jesus freely gave. That's what makes man pure and clean and whole in God's sight, because the Lord was pleased with the sacrifice of Jesus, His blood is absolutely essential to salvation. Now, another thing that we want to realize about the blood of Christ is that that blood is what made peace with God. You see, there had long time been enmity, for a long time been enmity between man and God because of sin. Sin separated and severed from the Garden of Eden forward. Sin severed the wonderful relationship that God wanted man to have with Him. How is that peace between God and man going to be made? Well, friend, we again learn that it occurs by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want you to notice what Colossians chapter 1, verse number 20 will say about the blood of Jesus. Listen to these words. Colossians 1, verse 20 says, Of the Lord and His great sacrifice and by Him, to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. When the cross was stained with the blood of Jesus, when that sacrifice that appeased the wrath of God was made, then, friend, peace occurred between man and God. You know, each one of us, want peace in our lives. We don't want conflict. We don't want problems. We don't want fights. We want resolution and we want peace. We can have the peace of God 
which surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 9. By contacting the blood of Christ that brings peace. Friend, if we don't contact His blood, the Jesus blood, if we don't obey the gospel, if we don't realize that it's the only way to have peace, then we're going to be severed from God. And as Paul would describe, without hope in this world. And so the peace of God only comes by the blood of Jesus Christ and His great sacrifice. Now friend, there is another great thing that the blood of Jesus does and it's such a powerful attribute to His sacrifice. The blood of Jesus is actually that which destroyed the devil and his power. And remember, we're talking about blood representing death and sacrifice and atonement. Listen to Hebrews 2.14. The Bible says of Jesus, He, through death, overcame him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. How did Jesus defeat the devil? How did he destroy his power? How did he release men and women from the, the, the grip and the stranglehold that Satan and sin had on them? Through his death, Jesus overcame the devil and his ultimate power that he had through sin. Death is defeated. The devil is defeated. Sin, a remedy to sin is given. All of that occurred in the great sacrifice of Jesus. And so when we stand back and we think about the blood of Christ, friend, it is that which heaven gave for mankind to be saved and how we desperately need that blood to each one of our souls so that we can be right in the sight of God. Friend, there's another powerful lesson that we learn about the blood of Jesus, and this is going to tie in directly with why and how we contact His blood and why that's so significant. Friend, the Bible teaches that it is the blood of Christ that cleanses man from sin. How does man's spirit, man's soul, get clean and pure in the sight of God? Well, the Bible specifically says it is the blood of Christ. Notice 1 John 1 verse 7. John says, if, here's the condition, if we walk in the light, as He is in the light. We have fellowship one with another and the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. The cleansing agent. You know when you think about cleansing something, you think about cleaning it, you think about maybe getting a stain off of something, maybe a cleaning agent to make something look really clean and sharp. You wash your car, you, you, know, you, you get soap and you cleanse dishes, whatever it may be. There, there's some type of agent that makes that cleansing happen. Friend, it is the powerful blood of Jesus. I'm not talking about physically, but spiritually speaking, in the heart and mind of God that cleanses man's soul from sin. Remember, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Now, ultimately, and in just a few moments, that's going to lead us to the great question, how do we contact that cleansing blood of Jesus? If the blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin, I want to know how that happens. And we're going to notice exactly how it happens from Scripture in just a few moments. But friend, also realize this, because it is such a significant principle as it relates to the blood of Jesus, let's realize that the Bible says it is the blood of Christ that washes man from his sin. I want to direct your attention to a passage in the opening words of the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1. I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 5. The scripture says, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth, now watch this, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins, in his own blood. Again, the idea here is that of a cleansing occurring, a washing. Imagine you've got a, a, a dirty piece of clothing or a dirty rag, and you take that rag, you mix it with water and soap, and you wash it real good, and the end product is that which is clean and, and without the defect of the dirt and the mud and the grime that might have been on it. Well, friend, spiritually speaking, sin is that stain. Isaiah 64, 6, God said, All our righteousness is like filthy rags. Even when I've done everything that I've been asked to do, the best design that I can say of myself is I'm an unprofitable servant. I've only done that which is my duty, Luke 17, 10. But man does have the option. God has made it available for him to be remedied, to be cleansed of sin, 
and to be made white and pure and holy in the sight of God. In fact, in Revelation 7, verse number 14, John sees a great scene of all the redeemed of the ages. And they're standing on Mount Zion. And the question is asked, who are these? These are those who've come out of the great tribulation who had their robes washed in the blood of the Lamb. There again is that idea. Now, in the remainder of our time, let's ask the question then, if the blood of Christ is so significant, how does a person contact the blood of Jesus Christ? Well, if it is the blood of Christ that forgives sin, and we've noticed that it is, then friend, at whatever point the Bible says we receive forgiveness. Can't we know as well that's when we've contacted the blood of Jesus? Notice Acts 2 verse 38. Peter stood up with the eleven. They proclaimed Jesus as the Lord and Savior, the Messiah. And they asked the great question, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And the answer was, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Now friend, you've got to think about it for just a moment. If the blood of Christ forgives us of sin. Then friend, at whatever point in time in God's plan of salvation, the Bible says man is forgiven of sin is the point in time when we contact the blood of Jesus. And friend, the Bible says when we obey God's plan of salvation and are baptized, it is for the forgiveness of sins. That's when I contact the blood of Jesus. What else do we know about when a person contacts the blood? Well, think about this. If the blood of Christ is that which cleanses us and washes us of sin, then friend, whenever the Bible says we are cleansed of sin, that's the moment we can know we've contacted the blood of Jesus. Now remember, Revelation 1 verse 5, Jesus washes us in His own blood. 1 John 1 7, if we walk in the light, see us in the light, we've got fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus cleanses us of sin. Now, when does the Bible say those two things happen? I want you to notice Acts chapter 22 and verse number 16. Ananias comes to Saul and he says, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Friend, did you hear those words? The Bible said it is the blood that cleanses and it is the blood of Christ that washes us of sin, right? Whenever the Bible says that happens, we can know we've contacted the blood of Jesus. Ananias came and said, Saul, you need to get up and be baptized and wash away your sins. Baptism is the point at which the Bible says sins are washed away. The Bible says sins are washed away by the blood of Christ. Therefore, I contact the blood of Christ at the point of baptism, the culminating act in which we obey God's plan of salvation and do what God says to become a Christian. And so, yes, it is indeed essential for salvation and to ultimately please God. Now, we also ask the question, how does a person, when we think about contact the blood of Jesus, we think about this question as well. The Bible teaches, no doubt, that it is the blood of Christ that saves. Romans 5, verse 9, we have justification by His blood. If the Bible says the blood of Christ saves, then friend, at whatever point the Bible says we are saved, we also know we've contacted the blood, right? Romans 5, verse 10 clearly teaches we're justified. Romans 5, verses 9 and 10, we're justified by the blood of Jesus. Well, let's ask the question then. When does the Bible say a man is saved? 1 Peter 3, verse 21. The Bible says this. Baptism does now also save us. Friend, if the Bible says baptism saves, then I can know that's the point in time we've contacted, I've contacted the blood of Christ. Listen to Jesus' words in Mark 16, 16. The Lord said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. If we've heard the word of God, we believe in Jesus, a man is willing to repent of his sins, confess Christ as Lord, and be baptized, Jesus said that person who believes and is baptized will be saved. In the culminating act of God's plan of salvation, baptism is the point in time in which we contact the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My friend, there is another 
hallmark and blockbuster passage that teaches us about contacting the blood of Christ, and that's found in Romans chapter 6. I want to direct your attention to Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse number 1. We learn specifically and explicitly when we contact the death of Christ. The Bible records, beginning in verse number 2, Certainly not, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Now watch this. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Therefore we are buried with Him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If it is the death and the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus that saves, then friend, the Bible specifically tells me right here when we contact the blood of Jesus. We were buried with Him in baptism into His death. Friend, there's no denying and no getting around the fact that baptism is the point at which we contact the death, the sacrifice, and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I know there are a lot of people who teach baptism is not essential. There are a lot of people who teach it's a good thing to do after you're saved. If the blood saves, and it does, and if it is baptism is the point in time in God's plan of salvation when I contact the blood and death of Jesus, then, friends, salvation does not occur before baptism. Salvation occurs when we obey the gospel. Are we saying there's something mystical or magical in baptism? That's not what we're saying. Friend, it's just simply what God has told us to do. There's no denying that. But denying that it's not essential is denying the plain teaching of Scripture. Jesus said in John 3, verse 5, unless a man is born of water, and the Spirit, He cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so, friend, we ask you today, if it is the blood, the sacrifice, and the death of Jesus that saves, and you contact that blood at the point of baptism, and friend, have you obeyed God's plan of salvation? Have you contacted the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? If not, we encourage you today to obey the gospel, become a Christian, and may God help each of us as we strive to live our lives in such a way that it brings honor and glory to the great sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, radio, and internet. Our motto is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.